currently living in Germany. Currently studying MA in philosophy and politics in the University of Edinburgh. It's an opportunity to see the other side of the world. Now, COVID cases Four months are affecting American up. children. And and back here at home with the alternative news tonight about the ABC's coronavirus. Been devastating and this pandemic truly changed the world. Knowing why you are doing all this is very important. Leadership is about understanding nature and nurture, flight or flight, and flexibility. You need to be independently disciplined. Being in organizations shows me how to be independent. They help me with leading myself and in return, be able to lead people too. Hey, Asfini, have you ever thought about studying abroad? Definitely. It sounds like a, such a fun new experience. Have you, Selena? I actually have thought about it. However, there are still a lot of things that I don't quite understand, especially as the video that has just been shown. We're still in the middle of a pandemic and everything is done online. How, like, also, we're going through a phase called a new normal, right? Uh, how do you even apply to universities there? I also don't really know about that. Do we really even need to go abroad because we're doing everything online and we can do it from our homes instead? Luckily, our speakers today are currently studying abroad, so they can share their experiences with us. Oh, really? That sounds so interesting, but I'd love to get to know them more. Should we ask them for an introduction? Sure, let's start with Aquika. Can you please introdu introduce yourself for us? Hi y'all, uh, my name is Aquika de Vienna. I'm 19 and I used to be in Smak Lima. I think I was batch for 24. I'm currently studying masters in philosophy and politics in University of Edinburgh in Scotland, United Kingdom, and I'm graduating in 2024, so a long way to go. Okay, thank you for your self-introduction, Aquika. Studying abroad sounds so interesting. Hey, Asvini, I, well, you know what I heard about Aquika? She was the student's consultative assembly when she was in 11th grade, an active member as the flag raising ceremony officer, theater club, and also the scouts. She also attended lots of English competitions, won as the second runner up and was the champion in debate competition in the consecutive year of 2016 and 2017. Furthermore, she also joined lots of school events, such as being on the committee in Escalades for two years. Wow, that's amazing. By the way, I heard that Daryl is studying abroad in Europe too, Germany specifically. May we hear your introduction, Daryl? Hi guys, uh, my name is Daryl. I'm also from Batch 24, as you may know. Um, currently, I'm not studying yet. Uh, I'm planning to enroll at winter uh, for psychology. I want to study psychology, but currently I'm not doing anything. So you might Think of me like a very productive, unemployed person. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Selena, I also have some interesting facts about him. Here, Daryl was known as an active student who joined lot, lots of school events, such as the Escalates as the committee and liaison officer for the of English competition. Then he won lots of uh, English competition as debater. In 2018, he got the first runner-up in NSDC national level, NSDC province level, NSDC re regional level, and Indonesia language debater in Pernabur Harapan Indah. Wow, wow. As, like, as we all know, NSDC is one of the prestigious national school competition championships. That must be a great moment for Daryl to be involved in such a competition. Besides Daryl and Aquika, we also have our beloved teacher, Pak Juan, as one of the speakers in today's talk. You know, it's interesting that when Pak Juan was in senior high school, he also joined a debate competition. Wow, maybe next Daryl and Pak Juan can be a team or can have a sp sparing debate. <laughs> I like that idea, yeah. I would like to see that in the future. Oh, and besides debating, uh, uh, Asfini, I heard that Pak Juan also joined uh, the Students' Council in both junior and senior high school. Wow, what an active student. And um, then when he was in college, he was also the coordinator of the theological students from GKI. He's also the founder and the first chief of Parentis Foundation, a foundation at a campus which works for social movements for homeless children and youth. 
Selena, what I know recently, he has just graduated from Ukrida. He has just gotten his master degree in school management. And interestingly, his thesis was about the implementation of PKBN 2K under the supervision of a collaborative headmaster. Oh, okay. So I see. That's why this topic is really suitable for today's talk show. I know. Okay. Right now, we have already heard a brief introduction from our speakers. Why don't we just get started now? Daryl, Akwika, and Pajuan, the time is yours. Well, Akwika, thank you for the amazing introduction. First thing that comes to mind is your choice of country. Because like politics, why, why UK? You basically have a lot of possibilities, United States, or in fact, Indonesia, why at the end of the day choose UK? Well, I mean, first of all, that is my question to you because it's Germany. It's, it's a bit random, to be honest. But um, yeah, to answer a question, I, I've always wanted to study something about politics and philosophy and economics at the same time. But I realized when I was in, in Smaklima in high school that Indonesia we're we're not that good. I mean, like we're not the best in terms of for politics and philosophy and and economics. So um, I found out then that I could actually do a degree in the UK. That's all of them at the same time. So a combination of the three of them at the same time, and because um, considered to be one of the traditional degrees here in the UK for some reason. Um, yeah, and I really like it. I really like doing politics and philosophy also in an English speaking country, especially the UK, because the UK is a pretty old country and there's been history of politicians and economists and of course philosophers that's that come from the UK. And I mean for some for example, David Hume, he's actually a graduate, he's he's a graduate from the university that I go to right now. And um, I just thought that it would be best if I go to the UK more than the US and, and also the US is pretty expensive. We all know that. So I, well, I chose the UK. And now my question to you, why Germany? It's really random. And I, I remember that you wanted to be a psychologist when we were in the same class for three years in Smaklima. Well, you're not wrong. Psychology has, has been my interest since high school. And it's also correct. If you actually look in Google, best university for psychology bachelor in the world, if you check the top 10 list, that will be one until eight, I, I believe is from United States. And the rest, I, I believe nine is UK and 10 is, uh, is also United States. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like United States is really expensive. Uh, I've done research once and a semester in US costs like a year living in Germany, like it's around $12,000, I believe, as an international student. And in Germany, you need like around 10,000 euro, that's around $12,000 as well, but that's for the whole year of living. So I feel like it's not really worth it to pursue such kind of education. Uh, and basically in Germany, you study for free. You only need to pay semester fee. And this semester fee is basically for you as well because it's for your semester ticket. They call it semester ticket because basically with this ticket, you can use all public transportation available. So train, um, buses, if you have tram, then also tram. And it's not only in that city. Most of the time, it's the whole province. So you can basically has ticket for, I don't know, for traveling, uh, or just for sightseeing. And I believe that's a very good system. And the other thing is, I've been studying Indonesia for, I don't know, like 12 years, 12 years plus three years in kindergarten. And I feel like, you know, I want to see the other side of the world. I, I want to experience something new, something more than Indonesia. I'm not saying Indonesia is bad as a country, but, you know, it's just the opportunity, you know, the opportunity as a young people, you see new stuff, you feel new stuff. I think that's the best reason that I can give to you. But Akwika, I think this is uh, uh, this might be a, a question as well for other people that wants to study abroad. How how do you prepare to go to UK? Is, it's is it uh, difficult? The preparation, all of it. Can you can you please you know explain it to us how you prepare uh, to go to UK? 
Okay, to be honest, our conversation kind of reminds me of the old days when we were doing debates together. But yeah, because it's very formal. Anyways, um, I don't think there's, well, I mean, there is a lot, of course, that is inevitable to have a lot of things to do when you want to move to a country that's basically a developed country and you're from developing country. Um, but yeah, there it's complex, but it's not as complicated as it looks, especially because I got a lot of help from my agent. Um, she really helped a lot with everything. So I'm really thankful for her. Um, yeah. So basically, of course, we know that we had we have to do some kind of English proficiency test. I did that the first time before I moved to the UK and I got 7.0 for my IELTS. Um, then I took it again a year after I lived in the, in the UK and I got 7.5 or 8. I forgot. Anyways, I got into uni anyway. Um, but yeah, so, okay, so I've been thinking about this and there's a lot of people asking me that which one should you get for the UK, TOEFL or IELTS? See, there's no diff, not that, okay, so there's a lot of differences, but I would say IELTS because it's not that they don't, they don't take TOEFL here, but they just prefer IELTS as a standardized um, proficiency in English because, because um, I've been to both tests and I actually prefer IELTS more because you talk to a native and then for listening, there are some parts of it that that requires some kind of accent to understand and I guess that's a little bit better for you to understand English more than just like oh American English that's it and that's why I like about IELTS and maybe that's why UK actually prefer IELTS more and yeah also for documents they ask you to do medical checkups um, I think it's for tuberculosis and then they ask for corona of course these days and I guess that's it. The other ones are just from schools, um, your previous school records and, you know, just family stuff. I don't know. That's just the stuff. And financial, of course, they would ask you, they would ask both of your parents' financial account just so, you know, when you live in the UK, you don't, you don't get to be a hobo or like a broke person there you actually have something to spend and to live there. And I agree with Daryl, with the US, it is so expensive there because I did my research too before I moved to the UK and the just one tuition fee, one year tuition fee in the US cost for a cost two year of tuition fee in the UK alone. And that's for one of the most prestigious universities here. Like my, my universities is literally for a year, it's half, um, half a year of, the one in the US. So yeah, if you really want to go to the UK, I would definitely recommend for you to actually find a good agent, just because it would really help you with the documentation. And the whole visa stuff, it's a bit hard for you to get in, especially when there's Corona, if you don't have any help from anyone. How about you, Daryl? How's, how's things going on? Well, it's very interesting to hear that uh, agent is pretty important. Well, in, if, if you want to study in Germany, the most important stuff is not your agent, it's the language. Well, you see, Germany, in German, they don't, they don't, people don't speak English, they don't speak English so much. So the first thing that you need to prepare is your German. And basically what I need to do, what I have to do back then is uh, I practically enroll for a super intensive course that's around six months. So you learn six months, like I think um, six hours a day, six hours a day of German. And then after two months, you you, wrote, uh, you, you write your first uh, language test. That would be B1. That's the language level. You need at the minimum of uh, a B1 language proficiency certificate in order to apply for a visa. So first things first language course, and then you, you do your, your test. If you manage uh, to pass the minimum score, then you get your certificate. It doesn't really matter like how, how good you are. So it's not important if you have 80% or 60%. As long as you pass, then it's good. The next thing you need to do is practically apply. You need to fill out lots of forms. You, what you need to pay attention here in Germany, it's very clear. You just need to follow the instructions. Don't think too much, prepare everything. If they ask you 10 different documents, bring 10. 
don't ask eight. Can I bring eight? Oh, or or probably bring five. We're, we're not we're not in 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 Indonesia in in Mark and we say ah yeah. Can, can I get the chili for five thousand one kilogram? It, it doesn't work that well <laughs> because to be fair, I've I've seen a person. It's a friend of mine. Uh, he forgot to bring I, I I believe two documents and oh my god, the people there they they were so mad. They keep uh, they keep on telling him why you do this why you do that uh, we can basically say no we don't give you visa right now, and so forth and so on it would just make your life difficult just prepare for everything and ah oh, yeah I, I forgot to say one thing before you apply for visa you need to apply for um, I don't know what's the English word for that but in German we call it Aufnahmeprüfung Einladung so that that sounds a little bit difficult but it's basically a ticket for entrance exam. Because uh, in, because of in Germany, it's free. There's lots of people that want to go in. You need to do an exam, a, a test, basically. Uh, if you already get this ticket, then you bring that ticket uh, as you apply for your visa. And after that, I feel like you only need to pray <laughs> because there might be a possibility that they say, oh, no, we don't like you here. <laughs> because then it happens to one of my friends. There's just a weird reason why, but he, he didn't get his visa and I know what he's doing right now, to be honest, probably <laughs> studying in other place. But yeah, so just pray and don't buy ticket first hand there. Therefore, don't buy ticket first. Wait. And if you get the visa, then buy the tickets. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not really that difficult, <laughs> even though it's done so. Uh, yeah. So back back to our topic. Um, well, I mean, so <laughs> you're not. The, the fact that you say like um, with the eight and 10 files, it kind of reminds me with culture shock too. Cause I had that um, back here, how strict people, it's not that they're strict. It's, it's more that it's a habit that they're more disciplined than us in Indonesia. But um, yeah, do you, have you ever, well, I mean, you have probably, but what kind of culture shock like shocked you the most? When you well, moved in Germany, I mean. <laughs> this is a very interesting question. Um, thank the corona. I don't experience lots of culture stuff here in Germany. But um, I, I, w- I won't say culture shock. I, I would rather say something amazing what I've never seen before, especially in education system from Indonesia. Um, even though in Indonesia, we're, we're kind of like encouraged to ask questions, to be active in class, to have this active environment of learning it, it never came to fruition actually like it, it never happens no one asked question uh, no one answered the question we're, we're just we're just hearing the teacher um, but in germany it's it's totally different it's 180 degrees different basically the teacher they're very encouraging uh, encouraging they, they ask you questions to questions they give uh problems and, and you need to actually answer that uh, and actually, and that actually play a role, plays a role in, 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 in your score. So you're more likely to be motivated because if you don't really, if you, if, if, if you can do your exam pretty well, then this active score, this can actually helps you a lot. And to be fair, other things that I really like would be how the teachers teach you. Because I feel like sometimes in Indonesia I have this problem when I ask question, and then the teacher will basically just repeat the whole thing, but like slower. Like if you watch YouTube videos and you don't understand, you click speed 0.5. It's basically the same things, but only slower. I don't think if it, if it helps. But in Germany, I feel like when you ask something, they really like answer you, uh, answer your question and you will understand basically. Other stuff, Asian food. <laughs> I need to ask you first, Akwika, because UK is basically famous for a lots of foods, Indian, Asian, I don't know. How's the food there? How's the food? <laughs> well, I mean, it's really bad here. Let's just, let's just be honest. All right. Um, I used to, so I use, I, I live in Scotland right now, but I used to live in Brighton, which is south of England, very near to London. Um, you would think near London, south of England, whoa, full of food, variety. No, it's not. There's just fish and chips everywhere. Um, yeah, so there's nothing here. And I guess it's also the same thing with Indonesia that when, when a, a type of food comes to Indonesia, you'd probably just, oh, 
let them adapt first, then I'll start liking it. The same thing goes here. Like, you can actually find Korean food, right? For example, that's the nearest to Asian, to Indonesia, I would say. It's not spicy at all. And I'm like, I always ask them, like, hey, can I have more spice? Because I can't, because I can't taste any spices here. And they're like, is that not, it's that not spicy enough? That's literally the spiciest we got. No, it's not. I'm Indonesian. There you go. Yeah, so other than that, I can't really say anything. I'm really, I'm pretty much adapted with it already because I've been living here for like, what, three years? Um, yeah, I try to cook by myself, but to be honest, I am very bad at cooking. So I just, I just stay with Indomie and stuff like that. But yeah, I agree with culture shock. It's, I don't, I never really experience a significant culture shock just because I've, you know, I'm, I'm already, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much already updated with, uh, with West, the Western culture before I even moved here. I mean, for some reason, I already know some of the, uh, the big names in the UK. So when people ask me about pop culture and stuff, I was like, oh, yeah, I know that person. It was on the radio like the other day. That was, some of them are lies, but like no one really knows. And um, I guess the culture shock is again with discipline. People hear how disciplined they are. For example, if you go on trams or buses, they would literally queue. Even when there's no queue, they would queue. In Indonesia, it would be like a freaking mass i don't know you know just a riot there when it's not it's it's basically it's not that it's it's a must i would say it's a habit that becomes a part of them um so i i kind of like that because that kind of teaches me on how to like adapt to them and also be disciplined towards myself because it's funny because when i go back to indonesia every summer my mom's like hey you don't really have to queue when i go you know get some boba or something and i'm like okay but that that's not that's that's uncomfortable for me because I'm used to it, you know. And it's so much easier for you to see the orders, see this, the order standing and stuff when you when there's a when there's queue basically. And yeah, I also agree with the um, the teacher stuff. People here are more proactive than people in Indonesia. I mean, first of all, maybe that's the culture that people in Indonesia are more, you know, um, stick to status quo. That oh, teachers and people who are older. We just have to bow to them and say, okay, that's it then. If they say no, then that's no. If they, they say yes, say yes. In here, no, you're going to have a whole debate with the teacher. And I've, I've been there. And I'm, I'm like the mo one of the most introverted person in here. And still I got debated with my teacher just because, okay, so for example, I just, I haven't slept for 36 hours, literally, because I had my math test. Um, and I remember in one of the tutorials that I went to, the teacher he put another kind of formula and I was like, why is that, why is that valid? It's not valid. It's not logical because the course that I was doing, it was logic one. It's literally called logic one, but it's not logical. So I said, no, that's not, that's not right. Why is that that? And some of my friends like, yeah, why is it that? And the teacher's like, um, we're just going to have to go through with the book. Like two years ago, someone asked the same question and I, for, and it's the same answer. And I'm like, okay, but that's two years ago. I really want to know why why that is that you know and we had a whole 45 minutes debate for that one question and i was right but we're not talking about that it's that the fact that people here know when to be proactive and when to follow the rules just because you know you can't be doctrinized onto something that is not you know valid in some places i i can't explain it but it's it's very it's very it's the thing that they, 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 it becomes a habit on them, proactivity. And yeah, I guess that's the same thing with documents and stuff. I started doing it by myself too. But yeah, I guess it's, it's different now because it's online. I can't remember how it was before um, Corona that I had to go to the teacher's room and say, hi, look at my paper. It's wrong. You know, I can't imagine that anymore. So that's what I wanted to ask. Like, how's, how's life in Germany before for all the corona stuff blown up, you know? Well, I, I need to give two responses, basically. I, I believe European, they don't, they, they are, they're basically, I don't know how to say it, 
but I believe we are Homo sapiens, and they might be under uh, other species in regards of MSG. They they don't know what MSG is. That is, I I believe that is the problem why foods in Europe are so bad. If they know what is monosodium glutamate, then then I believe their life would be much more better. That's first. But second, yeah, I I believe that with proactivity. I think people here are not really proactive because we lack motivation. You know, we don't really understand why we need to ask questions. Like, what for? And like, we, we don't really, because we don't understand why, we don't do it. Like, because basically, I don't know, even though I, I've told you before, it's really good, this, the, this kind of like active teaching process. But I feel like sometimes people just ask questions for the sake of asking questions, you know. And that's really bad because I, I've had this, this one person from Vietnam. He's smart, but he kind of like he he kind of like I would say a jerk. He he wants to show the whole class that he's smart. So he kind of like asks questions over and over again, if it's, even though it's not important. So at the end of the day, it's also so bad as well. But yeah. <laughs> um, but back again with uh, life as a student before and after Corona. If I have if, if I need to explain it in like the easiest way, I don't actually know as well because I haven't go to any like real. Uh, class like real class not online class offline class so i cannot actually like say and make comparison oh this is better or that is not so good but one thing that i can say online class is actually really good <laughs> especially for people that are very lazy like myself basically well let, let me create a picture first of uh, like what german looks like in, in regards to technology People here are really bad with computer, especially the older people. Like there's one case, like my teacher, she wanted to use this project, pro projector, what, what we always use in class. Like when the teacher wants to create a presentation, you just need to basically use this VGA cable, stick it to your computer, finish. And she basically needs 20 minutes to solve that. And in fact, she needs to ask, hey guys, do any one of you know how to operate this stuff? And basically it's really good for me because that means that our lessons is basically 20 minutes shorter than normal. And basically, yeah, so uh, from this, <laughs> you actually kind of like think that in Germany it's not really that high tech. So I never actually use Zoom, in fact, and that's the reason why I have so much problem with this virtual background. <laughs> but basically, yeah, they, the reason why they're not really good is because they don't really trust the big corporation like those google or facebook stuff because they feel like this company just sold their data and sees them as a you know one and zero and they don't really like it and the way they solve it is like they created their own system they make their own virtual uh like this zoom thing but german version they create their own gmail german version they create basically lots of things by themselves and yeah basically that but yeah back to topics uh so basically what i need to do during this pandemic is like i just need to do like several lecture back again i don't actually join them i just record and i go back to sleep <laughs> and then you you kind of like still have some sort of like homeworks but this is what difference but uh, the, the main difference between indonesia and germany in terms of like classes as a whole your teacher is not your parents in in, in germany in Indonesia, I feel like the teacher are very helpful. They kind of like reminds you like your personal secretary. I don't know if that's a bad word to say. I, I won't say that the teacher are really uh, helpful. So please don't be mad at me. Hi, miss. Um, but basically they kind of like tells you, oh yeah, class next week, we get two exams. Then we have a project. And like three days before they, they're gonna remind you again, hey class, have you done a presentation or have you that your videos you're gonna submit it next week or in three days in germany they, they won't remind you they're not your secretary they're your teachers so like at, at the first uh day of your semester they kind of like give you this kind of like uh plan like the timetables i would say what will happen at this month next month and basically after that you need to prepare for yourself you need to think when i would when, when will i do it or how will i do it so and it kind of like teach you in a way to be like disciplined. I would say independent of discipline because no one watches you. I mean, like in Indonesia, it's very easy to be disciplined because your teacher tells you every time, hey, make this, make that. And therefore you're disciplined. And I think in, in Germany, you can't actually do that. You need to be like, 
like independent the discipline that's the best word that i can say probably and yeah <laughs> that's basically what i can explain from studying in germany in corona but how about you uh Akwika? What, what's the difference between pre-corona and like after corona or is there even a difference um i it's the same for me with uh with the answers like i wasn't here before corona before corona things uh, broke out but yeah looking back at high school it was a nightmare not kidding um and we were i remember well we were in the same class three three years consecutively and um i think i remember 11th grade it was it was hectic wasn't it and uh yeah the same thing with with uh the uk it's like no one's gonna say anything if you're late okay so story time uh, last midterm i got an essay for politics yeah politics and um i had to submit it at 12 a.m and i was late seven seconds and they took away five percent of my essay score which is bad because it's five percent um although i still pass like all it's good. It's good. Everything's good. But still, you know, with 5%, you could do anything. And it's 50% of my whole credit, you know. Um, no one's going to say anything, not even your friends. They're just going to say, yeah, there's an essay, probably next week's due. But no one's going to say, oh, yeah, 12 a.m. on 26th of February. No one's going to say that. Everyone's just going to be, yeah, there's an essay. That's it. And no one's going to say what the question is, where you can find the question, because we've all got the same timetable so they expect you to do whatever you're supposed to do and with with my degree well maybe not just my degree but all degrees in the uk they expect you to read all of the books they want you to read before lectures so for me because i'm doing philosophy politics and economics so those books and books right so imagine ex imagine reading 24 books in one week every week so that's that's what it's what that's what the pressure is basically. But I mean to be honest, it's it's nothing for me because Smaklima was um was a nightmare. Not that I'm saying everything's bad there, but it was um it was a uh, it gives me mental practice, I guess. And um, on top of that, with the competition, with OSIS, um, everything else, it also kind of toughened up not just my mentality but my physic physicality. Because I'm a I'm a very weak person to be honest, but Maklima, they pushed me to the edge, and um, I didn't die. So that means I could have done it more than that, I guess, not my limit yet. So yeah, I couldn't really say anything about pre-corona because I wasn't here. But I remember like the first three months because uh, I moved to the UK in was it September October for uh, Brighton, and um, uh, what is it in Brighton? So I sometimes I went to London because it's very near and the translation in the UK is very good. So I again I scheduled everything up before anything else. So I had to schedule my school first, then myself, then anything else. And no one's gonna say anything. Not even my not even my teachers. Not even like the door manager. No one's gonna say anything, and I guess that's, I guess that's what it means being a leadership. You know, being a leader to, towards yourself. Because honestly, if you can adapt towards your environment and honestly know what they expect you to do, what they expect you to give to them, and what they expect me to receive from them, then you would understand what how to influence people. Because you already influence yourself. So what's there left? What's left? Anyways, and yeah. Is that is that how it is, Daryl? You know, I don't know. You're a best speaker back in the days, so I think you're better than me in English in any ways. Well, well, I I I think it's like my bad. I think I need to tell you guys beforehand. Like after you in Germany, my English is really bad, like really really bad. <laughs> but well, yeah, I, I believe Aquica. What doesn't kills you makes you stronger. I think that's the best way to put it. Because I feel that way as well. Yeah. Like this insane amount of like tasks and exams in SMAC 5 is actually like pretty bad, like when you experience it. But like after you finish it 
and you go to like another chapter of your life, in this case, university, you kind of like start to realize, yo, like all of this task, it's still, it's still doable because like, yeah, the last story, the last story here. Um, at my, uh, at my university, uh, at the really final exam, it's like the Ujian National of like in Germany, but for international student, we kind of like have this one week plan, but like, it's, it's really, it, it very, it's very different. Like if you compare it to in Indonesia, so you kind of like have German and then you have two days break because it's like Saturday and Sunday and you have maths and you have another break and you have physics, you have chemistry, you have another break and you have biology. So if you actually look at this kind of like timetable, it's, it's, it, it's, it's difficult, but it's kind of like doable because you still have like breaks. You can learn between these days. And the fact that you only have one exam per day, you still have like lots of times left in your day. But like, weirdly enough, like lots of people kind of like complain. They kind of like scream it out, you know, they kind of like say, oh no, like we can't do this. This is not humane. We are people, you know, we need breaks. <laughs> and like there, there were like 10 Indonesian students there and we just love it out. That's like the most, the funniest thing that we've heard the whole week. Like people complaining, oh my God, two days break is too, is too short. We need three days break I, or I don't know. Like, I was so surprised. And, and at that point, I kind of like realized, ah, yeah, all of those stuff that I kind of like hate, like two exams per day, plus one presentation and one videos. At the end of the day, it kind of like helps you mentally and like physically. I think in some way, yeah, because right now I can like shorten my sleep. <laughs> so when I need to like study for more hours, then I can just basically say, ah, yeah, sleep is for the week. I don't need lots of sleep. We can just sleep at the end of the week or so. But yeah, so the thing is now, I want to know like how, how does MAP5 prepare the student? Maybe Paj, Paj, uh, Mr. Juan can enlighten us with this question. How, how does MAP5 pre uh, prepare the student, Mr. Juan? Oh yeah, thank you, Daryl, for the question. Thank you for everyone for the time and opportunity for me to share at this event. Oh uh, yeah, my part is to support that the sharing story of our two great friends is closely related to the character building program known as Pekka Benduaka that we do in school. Uh, hopefully it can waken us for once again. And I don't want to lose your concentration on this inspiring sharing story, but hopefully I can, it can be heard and understood well. Everything uh, about our character building, this is our theme. Everyone, I think the biggest problem of, uh, that often happens to us in assuming character building is important, but we are never aware, that is a necessity. When we talk and explore about honesty, we feel that we have already understood it. And when we discuss about love, it feels like we mostly understand maybe related to romantic things around us. We know, we know character building is important, but we often underestimate, blame, doubt, and maybe don't care about the process. But hopefully after we listen to the stories of them, our two great friends, we will realize that character building is not only important, but also decisive. As a short introduction, everyone, we can understand the values in Pekka Benduaka in terms of four character targets. Be tough, excel worldwide, share with society, and trust in God. Start from the value of love to the various values contained in it, these four characters images point to the true purpose. These four important things that are expected to begin within you. And now I have a simple question. Can we see the four images of the characters in this sharing story? Uh, another question. Did the, did the character images help our friends achieve what they dream like now? And what is your answer? And what do you think about our character building program now? Absolutely, the answer is yes. Yes, they have been formed. 
with the character's goals and that is what enables do them to achieve a lot today and personally i feel that all penabur communities are affected by the existence of this pkb and duaka we will become accustomed to doing everything with quality achieving the highest attainment and doing everything in obedience and responsibility see pkb and duaka is not only important this is a necessity and everyone in fact it's not difficult to relate the sharing story character values and the concept of leadership because true leadership begins with this, with success in leading ourselves people who can lead themselves actually have great potential to be able to lead others and this is the core of my explanation today let's pay attention to self independent as a keyword to find an understanding way to lead ourselves start from knowing ourselves completely able to set our daily time able to choose the most important things able to organize our behavior and maybe be responsible for personal decision if we are able to do these things reasonably we are self independent is it difficult yes it is very difficult for those who like to have fun and often ignore the future if there's a question i've thought well about the future but how can it still be difficult because for the second reason this things will be difficult because they require consistency they require consistency from us but fortunately we are in this pandemic era that requires us to be at home fortunately but why we are being tested to manage our own tasks especially for study so we can say that this pandemic is a quarantine for us to try to be more independent please listen carefully this pandemic is a quarantine for us and will you quarantine yourself to be better from the sharing story of our friend our two great friends i found something unique i can't explain all points but i try to reflect on some from aquica for example uh choosing to study in edinburgh as a unique reason of course not only uh prestige the reason is because she has an interest in learning several subjects and she's looking for a school that can combine this knowledge in one process correct me if i'm wrong it is economics politics and philosophy right uh, interesting and i'm sure since studying in indonesia aquica has criticized the national curriculum but this secret we'll see negligent of course not we can see the answer now she has reflected the character of beta by persisting and processing even though she didn't feel right see the result of her struggle is an inspiration to us and personally aquica has shown trust in god character with faithful and obedience in real in real practice her responsibility for the school process is is the form of obedience to god parents and herself and also for me if she criticizes the curriculum in our country it feels like suggestions suggestion for improving the quality of education in indonesia but also for us for us to appreciate the school process because everyone there will be a time where, when we can criticize something but there are times when we need to obey bear in your mind any other best characters you see there must be but of course we cannot discuss everything for now and from there i saw i also saw a unique experience i just uh, i just got to know him in this session but i believe he is a good person perhaps the same as aquica there are also experience shock culture in germany maybe because of uh, the difficult language but there has shown the ability to survive in a very different cultural life and this is not easy imagine everyone just using indonesian we often complain that the explanation of the material 
and the test questions are ambiguous. And how about German? Maybe it was only understood by LM German participants and teachers only. Everyone Daryl has shown an example of B tough character. And the question is, wants to be like him? I, I, I ask you everyone, wants to be like him? Because personally, I want to, I want to. But can we, if it is easy to complain at a slightly difficult process? There's one thing that I think it's unique and funny about Daryl is that he actually used a Nokia mobile phone. Imagine using Nokia in Germany, a country that is more technologically advanced than Indonesia. Maybe the school is in Germany now, but has a, has a simple character. Everyone, do not let us be busy pursuing these things that are not important and even become ignorant of what is important. I have a question that maybe sound silly. Which one, which one makes you more proud of? Using the latest iPhone series or studying abroad like Daryl in Germany or Aquica in the UK? <laughs> Do you think Daryl's simplicity and visionary character is part of the best character traits? Please answer yourself. Everyone, this is just a summary. Maybe we'll forget, but hopefully the sharing stories from our two great friends will inspire you to be even better. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Akwika, Daryl, and also Sir Juan for your time sharing with us all. Oh, and I was wondering, this is a question for uh, Daryl, what are the most important parts of the forms you need to fill in when you apply uh, your studies in Germany? Oh, wow. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> I believe the most important thing is naturally your name. You need to write your name first and foremost. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, I believe the most important thing that you have to have is the doc documents that they ask you because they, they're going to ask you lots of different documents, like basically language certificate. And they're going to ask you like your ID, Kartu Keluarga, um, your KTP. They're going to ask like all of that and your passport. So because there's like, there are lots of documents here, you, you just need to, you have to have a system. You need to have at best, I don't know, map or I don't, you just need to basically know where your documents are because if you don't have it, it's, it's chaos. But yeah, I believe like the most important part is your documents. Well, hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> okay. Thank you and Daryl for raising for answering Selena's question. And that was a very good question, Selena. And for our participants, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to raise your hand and unmute yourselves. And we also really encourage you guys to ask any type of questions now. And we prefer if you guys unmute yourselves instead of chatting in the chat box. And if you guys have any questions you guys can chat in the chat box first and please feel free to and we will call your name later okay so the first question is from felicia fania yeah okay hi uh, i just want to ask to Al alika about the uh, in what ways have your agent helped you in terms of immigration to the uk yeah thank you uh right so um i'll just give an example just so you'll see how the, the comparison is um i used my agent and i got here i got offers at this uh perfect time i got visa perfect time and everything just perfect i have two friends that missed their offers one i think it was manchester and the other one's from another university because they had to do it alone and because of the pandemic and stuff they couldn't accommodate each other, not, um, they couldn't do, they can use transportation to places. And they, I think one of them lived in Iran and one of them lived in somewhere else. And then the one in Iran, she couldn't go anywhere else because of the pandemic and travel so much harder. And especially with the, uh, 
because of the pandemic, sometimes the visa office it closed and, and it opens and no one knows when. So she missed her offer and her visa at the same time because she had to do it alone. And one of them actually said that it uh, should be it would be better if she had you know agents and stuff just so because they know and they can they can probably communicate with people who works at the visa office to accommodate you a little bit better and that's what my agent did to me uh with me she actually booked the the whole visa appointment because of the pandemic so there's there's limits of people who could apply for visa and especially for offers because in my case i had a levels my score was lowered down because i couldn't go to do the 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 a levels which is like the national exam too um like physically so they kind of just lowered lowered down my score and this this happened nationally actually internationally to everyone who did a levels and i think b tech and the other stuff too and um my agent actually had to talk to the visa visa guy to like hey you know it wasn't her fault that she kind of missed this two percent from um like my initial grade and they're like oh actually yeah it's because of the whole a level scandal that the ministry of department so you need them to communicate with people who you you can possibly do if you don't have them do you get what i mean i i i hope people understand what i'm saying yeah i guess i guess that should be it okay um thank you and Valicia for the question and also thank you Akrika, for answering Okay, so the next question is from our own administrator, uh, Pak Ogi. Okay, uh, hi Daryl. Uh, I have I have a question for you. Uh, you said that some old people don't really trust companies like uh, Google and Facebook. Then what do they use when they need it originally? Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you for the question. Um, well, basically, like for example, I believe in Indonesia or in Smart Life, we kind of like use Moodle or Google Classroom for like the whole teaching process and like Zoom probably. Uh, in Germany, first of all, we have Big Blue Button. That is like the uh, safe version, like no data selling software and so on. And then they kind of like have this web uh, web.de that is the uh, gmail version for for, for, Ger for german people and then they have their their own version of google classroom so it's like newer system in some ways but it's kind of like slower because you know like google is much more bigger and that's the reason why it's also probably easier to understand but yeah, in a way it's bad, but it's not really that bad. So they kind of like create their own version that, that I would say that is the question, uh, that is the answer. So, but thank you for the question. <laughs> I hope to satisfy. Okay, um, thank you, Paogi, for the question. And also thank you, Daryl, for answering it. Um, the next question we have from Nicolas from 11 Mipasato. You may unmute yourself. Oh yeah, thank you. Uh, firstly, I want to say that uh, I'm very invested in this topic somehow. Uh, this is one of the few talk shows, uh, few talk shows I've participated in, which I really concentrate in listening. Uh, it's nice to know that in outside of Indonesia, the students are encouraged to be uh, more independent, and they have to manage all their tasks by themselves without any reminder. So I'm curious whether we might get a bit of insight of how to manage our time schedule well. Uh, manage our tasks is there like any tips or tricks in spite of having other activities outside of school student council additional tutoring and stuff maybe thank you uh this yeah. is a question for either uh, <laughs> Daryl or Akwika. sorry oh, okay thank you uh, so i think Akwika, I'll, I'm, I'm gonna answer this question first and probably you can add your uh, great britain version queen elizabeth's version but well basically um when everything normal when everything is normal and there's no corona and so forth and so on there's actually a tutorial uh it's basically another student that's basically one year over you or two years over you 
you can basically ask them all the questions you want. Like this, if you don't want to ask the teachers themselves, but I would highly recommend that you ask the teachers directly because they're gonna help you. And if you can, if any one of you have interest to study in Germany, even if you think that your German is bad, like don't be afraid, just ask it. With broken German, I would say in fact, because they will understand it. I think it's it has something to do with like German is their main language and that's the reason why they kind of like understand it better in a sense. But even in the case when they don't understand your question, they just basically say, pardon, can you repeat that? And you just need to repeat it one more time or because the class is just so active, one people will definitely come and help you. I believe, yeah. But other things that you can do to actually like learn, I would say the library. I'm not sure why, but like German people have this fetish for library. It's everywhere. Like in a city, you can have like three libraries. And most people say is that uh, most people say that if you need something, just go to the library. It would basically help. So yeah, I believe three easiest way: your teacher, your tutor, the library, or probably in fact your friends. But sometimes your friend is as clueless as you are. So yeah, use the first three and then your friend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what about you, Akika? What happened? Uh... Was the question about time or was it about learning? I believe it's like how, how you can like, uh, if you have problems with study. Oh, all right. Um, I had a lot. Uh, first, first of all, I am a master, the master of procrastinator, but I use my guilt to schedule stuff. And honestly, I learned to use, you know, when you're when in, on iPhone, there's calendar. I use that a lot. And here in, in the UK, you go everywhere on your foot sorry okay so you you walk everywhere or the bus and their schedule you gotta you gotta go through it and i live in scotland it's really cold here there can be snow it's literally april and there's snow like last night so you would never know how the weather is so you basically you have to schedule everything because of you because of your fear just fear basically i use fear to like oh go here at the same time because i don't want to i don't want people to say oh she's 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 very neglectful she she's late to everything and um i learned from my senior who's also an indonesian he said that he started making like a weekly schedule um you don't really have to make a default schedule or like a more detail to it you can just do it a day before that but basically you have to schedule like when your when your when's your classes or what you can do before class or when to meet some people because you know you need some social life too and i do that a lot i usually talk to my friends like i i give them time <laughs> someone's like hey can you just rsvp before three in three days just so i know if it's if it's available if i'm available or if you're available just respond as if you play and i guess yeah i guess that's it for a learning same thing library the best thing ever the best invention humankind ever had um in edinburgh particularly because i live in near this the, the main campus there's like two big libraries there and there so i can just go anytime but like um yeah that one and also don't be afraid to invest on um online library because I think I subscribe it for audio books, some kind of app. And then there's another one for um, just Amazon Kindle. It really helps a lot because you never know when you're gonna need it for your essays, for just basically referencing for studying. And yeah, invest on that. Even if it's like, if it's like, oh, do I really read? You're gonna read, everyone's gonna read. So yeah, reading is number one although it is really boring and I have very short attention span, it doesn't matter because I use highlight a lot because see, my brain is very hard to just concentrate on one thing. So I, I bought a lot of all of those um, highlighters and I use a lot of them all the time just so I can see, oh, this is where I was. And then I put a lot of notes on the page. Like the other day I read Sun Tzu and I, I just wrote a lot of things that's like, that's in, that's in Indonesian and in Chinese, but there's no English translation just so I can understand it better. So yeah, it helps a lot. Treat your books like your diary. It really helps. That's all I can say. I mean, I do 
I mean, I used to do science in high school, so I wasn't really particularly familiar with um, social and humanities stuff. And that's how I learned to read carefully and more concentrated on those things, I guess. I hope it helps, really. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for the question, Nicholas and Akuika and Daryl for your answers. Uh, next, we have a question from Pius from Eleven Nipa. Uh, yeah, hello. So my question is for Sir Joan. Sir, I want to ask about leadership. In your own opinion, what is the true meaning of leadership, especially how you apply your leadership and the way of you teaching us, teach us? Mm, thank you, Pius, for the question. Uh, leadership. For me, leadership is the ability to invite and direct a person or group of people to carry out and achieve certain goals. Maybe in the Christian leadership is known in the form of uh, serving one another and being friend to all people. So actually, this is a big task, but when we are able to lead ourselves, then we have enough strength to do the task. Yeah, I guess that's leadership. Okay, um, thank you. Pius for the question and also thank you Sir Juan for answering. Um, now we have a question from Olivia from Exos1. You may unmute yourself. Um, hi, thank you. So I just have uh, this question. Was it hard to adapt, especially alone during a pandemic in a foreign country? And how did you overcome it? Which answer the question first, Akwika, or should I should I start? Like um, up to you, it's okay. Well, you can you can, you can do it first this time. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, basically, Daryl used to do it first before me every time in debate, so I'm not very familiar. But uh, again, um, I when the pandemic started, I have I hadn't lived in the UK long enough to actually adapt it pre-corona. So I was just like, oh, okay, Corona, stay home. I mean, I was I'm introverted anyway, so I like being home. But I guess after that, um, and you know, in the U in uni, now that it's all Corona, new normal and stuff, um, I talk a lot online with. Well, I don't talk a lot, but I mean, I have some friends online um, that lives in Edinburgh also, and I don't live in the dorm, so sometimes I call them when I need something. And um, I guess with adapting, we just talk a lot on the call and um, study together. Sometimes we study at the, um, in the library. The library is the best thing ever, and cafes. So yeah, I really can't say about adapting um, in abroad, but I guess a tip I would say is to understand people first, like in, in their culture, like what habit they do, um, because in here people are overly polite. So you got to understand that before, like, for example, if you take, if you take the bus and then you're done, you're, you want to take off and whatever, you have to say thank you to the bus driver. It's, it's basically, that's, that's what I mean. You have to know the habit first, then you start adapting because of that. I mean, first of all, probably shock, like, oh, why, why is everyone so polite here? But I guess it's more like you understand the reason why they're polite, which is just so everything goes well, just so there's no aggravation and stuff. And um, yeah, that's all I can say. Understand, adapt, and to, to adapt is to understand. To adapt is to understand, that's really good. Um, Daryl. Well, to be honest, that's a very, that's a very good question. I, I've been, the whole time Aquica is trying to explain, uh, is trying to answer your question. I've been thinking to myself, like how, how, how can you adapt? I feel like it's a, it's a very uh, hard stuff to do because like, especially in Europe, it's like totally different culture. It's like lots of things that you read in the internet are not true based some, some of the time. And like some other time is true. So I kind of like, I would say first thing is try to be open, like adapting. Adapting is, is not like, I don't know, it's not like eating, but you can just do it anytime you want to. It's like something that requires a bit of time. So you kind of like need to adjust your expectation, like how fast you think to adapt, just take it like really slow. And if you actually want, if you want to study in Germany, then most of the time you, you don't have to like directly confront the culture because at my case, I kind of like have a senior here. So he kind of like shows me kind of like lots of stuff. Like for example, like at checkout, 
at supermarket, you kind of like need to go really fast. It's kind of like what people expected from you. And like this kind of like people, your senior, they kind of like, they, they will help you and they will explain to you. And at that point, it's just training. It's just training, try to understand it, try to accept it. So um, I kind of like feel if you want to adapt, first thing first, try to be open, set your expectation. And if you do, if you create mistake, if you do something wrong, just take it easy, you know, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. Like study, studying is already hard enough, I believe. So yeah, I think I, I think that helps <laughs> that answers your question. But yeah, that's my answer. Okay, thank you, Daryl and Akwika for the answer. And P is for the question. Next, we have a question from uh, Teresa. Hello, Daryl. Uh, one question for you. Besides from your experience checking out the supermarket, were there any other significant culture shock? Okay. Um, first thing that came the, that comes to my mind, it's actually pretty confusing here because we we are so custom that Indonesian people are very polite. They kind of like greet each other, but that's like totally wrong. I feel like in Germany you greet people more than you greet in Indonesia. For example, I I work at this um, pet shop. And it's kind of like big and basically every time you meet someone you always say like good morning hi and when you have break you always say it's like hey uh selamat makan <laughs> also both sides and uh the people here uh, always say it's like yeah uh hopefully you, you can eat well they kind of like keeps on like greeting people and i haven't like seen that in indonesia's like first at the very first time, I kind of like think, oh my, what's happening here? Why people are greeting each other? They don't know. They, but basically, at that point, we are all strangers, and especially me, I'm, I'm new there. But even even though I'm, I'm new, they're kind of like very polite. And yeah, it's kind of like a good culture shock, I would say. Um, other culture shock, I would say people in Germany really loves cash, like the paper version. Like in Indonesia, we're starting to use more cards flash or like debit card like in germany mo lots of restaurants don't accept cards you need to have your cash every time because they say it like they, they kind of like said it in a way they don't feel safe going out without cash so that's i i think if you want to visit the country make sure you have cash it's better to have cash than have cards i would say uh but yeah, I don't think I can think of anything else, but hopefully that answer your question. <laughs> okay, thank you, Daryl, for answering. Um, and now we have a question from Aurora. You may unmute yourself. Okay, hi, thank you. So I'm asking for either of Aquika or Daryl. So was there any disallowance from your parents when you thought of studying abroad? And if there was any, how do you convince, your, convince them until you end up studying there? Thank you. So, uh, I start first or you start first? Uh, okay, I start first. <laughs> um, first of all, I, I think I would like to say this to uh, any one of you guys. If any one of you want like, to study in Germany, you can ask me anytime. Bas uh, because I realized there are no agent basically to kind of like help you. It's more like the people above you the, the, that's already in German. Most of the time they kind of like help you. So if you kind of like have question or you like want to know something, you can ask me like outside the session. Probably I can help you because basically my senior helped me as well. But to answer your question, it's it's not a huge problem for me at that point uh, because my parents, both of them have studied in, uh, studied in Germany basically. They're both graduate from Germany. So it's like a, their wish as well at the same time for me to study in Germany. And I think they kind of like throw me away in a sense that they said, yeah, it's probably better as well if you don't come back to Indonesia, just stay there. <laughs> so it's, it's, we don't really have lots of problem, you know, between, uh, be between us because it's like their wish, it's my wish. So yeah, there are no, there are no problems or there's no problem here. How about you, Akwika? Well, I mean, first of all, our circumstances are quite different. I mean, I have I have a twin sister, right? And she's also batch 24, uh, but she's in University of Diponogoro. She's, uh, she's doing medicine. Although we're twins, we're very different. She is quite extroverted. I'm very introverted. She's more to science and I am very much more to humanities. So our parents already saw that 
since we were kids that we're quite different in terms of interest. Uh, and my dad wanted me to go to UI for law school because he graduated there. And, um, but I never really, I could never imagine myself doing law, um, especially doing law as in career. So I told them that I wanted to do something that um, requires mathematics because I love mathematics and, but like in more, not in theoretical way, more like something philosophical or something economic, economic things like that. And I told them that I wanted to do something with international relations. Um, and I guess I, I did some research and told them that, hey, if I stay in Indonesia and doing Hubungan International in UI or something like that, it wouldn't be as great as learning somewhere in the UK. And, you know, besides, I can speak English anyway, so why not take the chances? So my parents were a bit more skeptical because I'm a girl, first of all, um, and I am the eldest, literally, in my generation, in my extended family. No, no one ever been outside the country to study. In fact, me and my sister was actually were the first one who actually went to university. So they were like, what if, you know, just the social life and stuff, they're more liberal there. But I told them that like, hey, you know, is it is it really that is it is it just that, you know, if it if it's just that as a as a risk, I think I'm pretty much prepared. I guess like um, you know, I had I had some insights on what's what I'm gonna do anyway so why not take the chances and my dad is very overprotective the thing that made him give me the permission to actually go here is actually my mom so I told my mom like I cried I never cried in my life literally not really I cried rarely and I cried to my mom I was like hey if you don't want me to be depressed send me outside and then she's like oh you know, Aquika's, Aquika doesn't like it here in Indonesia. So maybe that's how, I don't, that's not a very good tips, but talk to your parents. I'm sure they want the best for you. Um, and parents, they, they're from different generations. So they have different perspective in life, especially international life. So talk to them and give them the, the benefits of the dot, of the, of the dot. Sorry, the accent just comes out once in a while. Um, yeah give them your perspective, also understanding them, their circumstances and how they grow up and how you grow up and kind of compare them. It's like a project, honestly. But once you get through it, it's it's the best thing ever. So yeah, I guess I guess that's it. That's all I can say. Okay, thank you, Daryl and Aquika. And I'm sorry, but uh, this uh, next question is only directed to uh, Aquika because we have a little time, we have a little time left, so... Um, Let's see, this is from Brian. He asked via chat, how do you spend your time off? Do your family visit you or do you go home pre-corona, of course? My family doesn't care about me, first of all. Um, they care about my sister and my brother more than I do um, because I think I grew up more individualistic than any of them. And they think that, you know, she's better left alone. Not that I'm complaining. I do crave some attention at times, but... They do call me once in a month, which is weird because every time I talk to my friends, they're like, oh, yeah, I call my parents like once every day or once every three days, like thrice a week. They don't. Every time they call, it's only one, two minutes. They just say, hey, can you buy me something like this? And then send it to Indonesia. I'm like, OK, sure. They do ask a lot about how I was um, through chat, though. They, they don't, they're not. My dad asked me a lot. My mom, she's more emotional. Than me, than me and my dad. So sometimes she just asks my dad to talk to me more than I talk to my mom and my sister. They're really emotional and they just cry whenever they call. So um, I do visit Indonesia every summer though. Um, and I'm going, actually I'm going next week after my last test, a day after my last test, because in Scotland, unlike any other UK country, they just lift up the um the lockdown like three days ago so i couldn't go home before that and um yeah my this is the first time my dad actually called me in desperation asked me to go home so i quite enjoyed it uh yeah but in free time i usually in here um again i i didn't i i couldn't really compare my life right now with what i how i lived before corona 
but I guess it's the same. I, I just stay home a lot, but I, I have some friends. We go to the park a lot. Here in the UK, there's a lot of parks. There's a lot of libraries. I go to libraries and parks a lot. And cafes are just, it's not just for aesthetics. They, they really have good coffees. Um, and there are mountains here that you can just uphill, go, whatever. I'm shopping. I don't really shop a lot. I just like walking around. And if you move to the UK, you can just talk to me if you really, you really have a lot of questions about UK. The thing about UK is you can walk everywhere. And um, I learned that because I have asthma and my mom called me in my first year living here like you have to go out it's really cold but it's worth it the the air here doesn't give you cancer like in jakarta so really if you have any questions about the uk and how life in the uk not that not that it's different anyway but yeah i guess you have to be adapted you have to be here to know um yeah and you kind of start speaking french a little bit when you move into to the uk so I can't really talk to Daryl in German, although we spent three years in German class. I actually speak a little bit French and you'll understand why if you live here. There's a lot of like French words that they don't bother to translate it. Even name like sauvage, uh, whatever, like just, you know, just you have to learn. <laughs> and Scottish if you live in Scotland. Um, other than that, learn the accent and there's no British accent. People say British accent, no, it's just posh like the queen. No one talks like that. Let me just tell you that people talk really harsh. So before you go to, to the UK, understand it first, like understand the accent because it's not like what it is in the movies, especially when you go up north. The word, not the worst, just a bit ridiculous at times because of how hard it is to understand it. If you're, you know, just American accent, that's all I know. You can't survive it here. You've got to learn that, I guess. I hope that answered the, the questions. I get a little bit off work, so. Okay, um, thank you, Akika, for your answers. And now um, we have a question for Daryl, and it's from Janet. Um, and it's also the last question. So Janet, you may unmute yourself. Thank you. Hello, my question is for Akika. When you say the difference between Indonesia and British education may lie heavily on the analytical and individual enhancement support, could you explain it in further detail? Thank you. Okay, I'll share this with Daryl just because he likes to talk. Um, I guess here's the thing. I'll just give an example. In Indonesia, when you go to exams, they just give you some kind of materials and just, hey, read this learn it and then whatever that is in there that's gonna happen that's that's what's gonna show up in the exam here it's different like you reference a lot from books so for example i told you that i like i have to read 24 books at least every week and they're never gonna ask you a specific question like okay if, if it's Karl marx right we know Karl marx had communism and stuff they're not gonna ask you about communism because everyone knows that they're going to ask you what it is about, as in like in general, if it's not about communism, what is it about? You know, no one, no one knows what the question is. They want you to actually read it and see it on your perspective instead of just like, oh, the teacher said it's about communism. Everyone knows karma is about communism. No, it's not about that. And also the same with maths, because like, I'm doing logic maths. So it's not maths as in pure maths, because I did that like last year, got A anyways. Um, they are going to ask you a bunch of different questions. Like, for example, um, they're not, logic is about symbolism, right? They're not just going to give you symbols. They're going to give you a bunch of like three paragraphs, a question, and the, and the answer has to be in 100 um, words or less. And no one was prepared. So, yeah, they, they didn't expect you to answer it perfectly. They expect you to um, answer it the way you understand it, you know. That's why I said it's, it's more analytical because they, they ask you to see it how they want you to see it, but also combine it with how you're, you yourself want to see it. Um, Daryl, German is different. You can tell your story. I'll mute myself then. Wow. Afrika is so, so, so friendly. She's so thoughtful. But I don't know if you want to hear my answer, but well, it's basically the same. 
um, you get the theory, but they ask you like your understanding. For example, at my biology class, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this medicine college course because I want to study psychology basically. Even though it's biology per se, that means you need to like learn a lot, like just rem remember it. The question won't be like, okay, this is your body. Please tell us the Latin name from each part of your body. They won't ask that. They would probably try to link between these team to the other team that you actually have learned at the same time. So it's kind of like they created this sort of like web system that you need to just, you need to understand it in order to answer the question. It sounds difficult, but if you actually hear their explanation, it's kind of like pretty easy because they explain it really well. And if you don't understand, just ask. And if any one of you are not sure about like studying here, I, I, I do think at very first time it's kind of like really difficult, especially with this language barrier stuff. But I feel like after you do it, it just kind of like became something like a habit and it, it doesn't feel really that difficult. So yeah, and best of all, you can actually drink alcohol here legally. I don't know if that interests you, but like in Indonesia, you might kind of like have to like hide your alcohol. Oh no, I, I'm drinking beer. Like in Germany, it's 18, no, it's 16 in fact. So kind of chill, man. <laughs> but yeah, so like studying is more like an understanding, I would say. Don't try to like cram everything in your head. It's useful only in a very specific moment like like in i don't know i haven't like really experienced when i totally like remember the whole books and then i can do my exam i never experienced that i think in fact i kind of like get not a really good score because of that and like after that i kind of like changed the way i studied tried to like create this kind of like web this kind of like oh this team correlates with these and it has a connection and after that i kind of like get the point and it kind of like stays in your head longer because at university basically the first semester is like a repeat of your college in germany so yeah free score i think that's all <laughs> yeah that's the answer <laughs> thank you Dero and akika for answering the questions so i think that wraps up for our q a sessions and thank you guys for your questions and if you guys have any more questions left, you guys can go to Osisbitten's IG and you can ask your questions there. So Selena, what have you learned from today's talk show? Well, I really learned a lot from all of them. There are some dis differences from learning in high school and here in Indonesia, as here we're given a timetable for us uh, while they say that they have to have a good time management like uh, what what Daryl said in German <laughs> there's only one exam a year and you'll be given uh, when the exam is held like instantly but uh, we need to prepare ourselves for that test and there's going to be no reminder for us you usually like teacher here like to remind us you know like have you done your homework have you studied the test next week yada yada there are also lots of differences like in cultures that can make us have like culture shocks as in england we call people by their first names while here we use honorifics like pa bu you know ka miss sir and uh as much as i personally dislike how much exams we have here it really prepares us so uh we can have like a better time management so they don't really hammer us to death when we get to university so um matthew what about you what have you learned well, I mostly agree with you, and I also learned on some new things, like how Germans aren't very good at English. Maybe it's like the stereotypes of how all Europeans can speak English well, or we have to say cheers to people in Scotland to con be considered polite. Well, I thought that saying see ya was already enough, and also Akrika kind of broke the college student stereotype by having a, an apartment on her own, and which is pretty neat, in my opinion. Okay, thank you again to our speakers, Akwika, Daryl, and Pak Juan for uh, sharing your stories. And thank you for everyone for tuning here with us in the session. And we hope you guys can learn something new from our speakers. And before we finish our talk show, uh, let us have a closing prayer. Let us pray. Uh, thank you, Father in heaven, for your blessings for today's talk show program. We hope that what we learned today may be useful and applied to our daily lives. 
Now we're going to continue with our own individual activities. Please bless us in our uh, activities for the rest of the day. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, and don't forget to share your experience today with us. Capture the moment and write a caption for it and tag us in our Instagram at usisbutten. Oh yeah, and for the top three questions, we have Olivia, Janeth, and Aurora. And we will contact you guys later. And thank you for your guys' time. And I hope we can tune in again with us in our next talk show. See you guys and have a nice day. God bless you all. And you may thank leave you. the Zoom now. Bye.